Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Top 10's Net, and in the video today, the top 10 assassinations you didn't realize changed history. Even though paradigm-shifting historical events are the end product of a multitude of factors, in some cases, a single catalyst can be the straw that breaks the camel's back and changes the course of a nation and possibly the world. Assassinations have been used as such a mechanism, and have successfully altered political movements and subsequently changed history. Many assassinations of political leaders have been overlooked or underappreciated in the context of a nation's history and said country's development. The killings in today's video, though, you might not realize that they changed the course of history. Number 10. Jean Jaurès a great opposition leader in the lead-up to France's decision to enter World War I, Jaurès was assassinated in a Parisian café by Raoul Villon, a 29-year-old French nationalist. Before his assassination, Jaurès helped merge two different socialist parties and formed the French Socialist Party. As the party's deputy, Jaurès served as a leading voice of anti-militarism and led the fierce opposition to the implementation of a three-year draft period. In addition, the socialist leader organized protests and strikes that hoped to force the government to back down and to negotiate instead of declaring war. Despite many Frenchmen hoping to avenge the loss of the Alsace-Lorraine territory, the assassination of Jaurès was still seen as a necessity before his attendance at an international conference. Three days after the socialist leader was assassinated, France declared war and Villon was acquitted of all charges. Number 9. Patrice Lumumba one of the unstable countries in sub-Saharan Africa is undoubtedly the Congo. It is a country rich in resources and there has been constant bloodshed over the areas with diamonds, oil, uranium and gold. The poverty that riddles the country as a result can be traced to the country's decolonialization and the assassination of the country's first prime minister, Patrice Lumumba. With the rest of Africa being decolonized, Belgium reluctantly gave the Congo its freedom. However, the relationship of former colonist and colonized began on a rocky start, with Lumumba giving a fiery speech. Although this independence of the Congo is being proclaimed today by agreement with Belgium, an amicable country with which we are on equal terms, no Congolese will ever forget that independence was won in struggle. A persevering and inspired struggle carried on from day to day. A struggle in which we were undaunted by the privation or suffering and stinted neither strength nor blood. Soon enough, Western nations had reinvaded the Congo, including the United States. Lumumba was eventually tracked by the CIA and captured and tortured by Belgium forces, along with Congolese soldiers supporting a different prime minister. According to the World Bank, the life expectancy of a Congolese today is only 50 years old, with 63% of the population living in poverty. Number 8. Emperor Haile Selassie one of the most underreported periods of mass killings and persecution came after the death of Emperor Haile Selassie and the period of Red Terror under Mengetsu Haile Marayam. Some would characterize Emperor Haile Selassie as a victim of his time, others would say that he was too slow to modernize or reform his government. Regardless, the Ethiopian emperor, who stood steadfastly at the League of Nations and argued for the tenets of collective responsibility before the outbreak of World War II, died under suspicious circumstances in 1975. He was said to have died of respiratory failure, but his doctor denied these accounts. The Derg's conquest of power led to the deaths of up to 500,000 people and a brain drain that saw millions of Ethiopians flee the country. Number 7. Luis Carlos Galán one of the most compelling cases of power by a non-state entity is demonstrated by the assassination of Luis Carlos Galán. Never before had the world seen a drug cartel as powerful as Pablo Escobar's Medellin cartel. And when Galán used his opposition against the cartels as a foundation of his candidacy, he became a target of these cartels. One of the most threatening parts of his candidacy was his support of the extradition of drug dealers to the United States. His rise not only threatened Escobar's Medellin cartel, but other political leaders in Colombia. According to a former hitman of Escobar, the decision to kill Galan was made on Escobar's farm at the behest of a liberal political leader called Alberto Santafimio Batero. Luis Carlos Galan was gunned down on August 18, 1989, as he walked onto a stage to give a speech in front of 10,000 people. As a result of Galan's death, the Median cartel continued to prosper for some time. 70 to 80 tons of cocaine were flowing from Colombia to America per month, and as much as 11 tons were going on every single flight. Number 6. Salvador Allende 
One of the most notorious CIA operations that led to the overthrow of a democratically elected leader was the coup d'etat that saw Salvador Allende imprisoned and eventually killed under suspicious circumstances. After Allende adopted a policy that would nationalize prominent industries in Chile, the CIA developed the ouster of the socialist president. Augusto Pinochet would take power after Salvador Allende, and he would be charged with numerous human rights violations. During Pinochet's dictatorship, estimates hold that 1,500 to 2,000 Chileans were killed or disappeared, as well as nearly 29,000 that were tortured. The death of Allende is still controversial, with some claiming that he was assassinated, while others say that he committed suicide before the military could take him prisoner. New forensic data suggests that Allende killed himself. He would have rathered the quick death by his own hands than the other option of being captured, tortured, and then eventually killed. Number 5. It's Hakrabin. The assassination of Itzhak Rabin and Israel's change in leadership may be the most apparent shift in the nation's history. With Rabin negotiating a peace deal, the Oslo Accords, with Yasser Arafat, Zionists saw his forfeiture of the occupied territories as heresy. During a rally in support of the peace negotiations, Yigal Amir, an ultra-nationalist and zealot, fired three shots at Rabin, who was walking towards his vehicle. Bodyguards quickly grabbed Amir while Rabin was rushed to the hospital, but it was too late. After he was pronounced dead, a blood-stained sheet of paper with the lyrics to a well-known Israeli song, Shir La Shalom, Song for Peace, was found in Rabin's pocket. The result of his assassination was the election of Benjamin Netanyahu's right-wing government in 1996 and the death of the peace talks. Number 4. Abid al-Karim Qasim Technically more of an execution than an assassination, and one that had the CIA's fingerprints all over it, was the overthrow of General Qasim, an Iraqi army brigadier who seized power in a 1958 coup d'etat which saw the dismantling of the monarchy and the establishment of Qasim as the prime minister. Qasim enacted several reforms that threatened Western interests, including the seizure of 99% of Iraqi lands from the British-owned Iraq Petroleum Company. He also distributed farms to more of the population. The result of the enactment was the expansion of the Iraqi middle class and the fury of Western powers. Soon after its nationalization, British and American covert operations began. This was supported by the Ba'ath Party. Qasim was overthrown by a Ba'athist coup in February of 1963, and he was killed shortly thereafter. Ironically, the man who would come into power after him was none other than Saddam Hussein. Number 3. Oscar Romero the most appalling assassination in a list that includes heads of state goes to the murder of Bishop Oscar Romero in El Salvador. Soon after he was appointed, the Archbishop of San Salvador, a good friend and fellow priest, was assassinated for his progressive views. His friend's death had a profound impact on Romero, who then began to champion the rights of the poor and the neglected, while also criticizing the United States' role in supporting the right-wing government. Oscar Romero was killed on March 24, 1980, when a lone gunman shot the Archbishop down while he was giving mass in his church. The horrible legacy of the Salvadorian Civil War continued long after his death. Indeed, by the seventh anniversary of his death, 50,000 people had been killed. The murder of the Archbishop was another item in a long list of United States atrocities in Latin America, actions that led to several hundred thousand Salvadorians fleeing their country. To date, nearly 1.1 million of them reside in the USA. Number 2. Nó Dinh Siem the Pentagon Papers would later reveal that South Vietnam was the result of United States influence. But nonetheless, at the time of his death, Siem was the president of a country that would soon provide the battlefield to one of the most opposed wars in United States history. At the onset, the legitimacy of Siem came under question as he became elected with 600,000 votes from an electorate of only 450,000. In addition, Siem was a Catholic in a nation of Buddhists. Nevertheless, with the United States' backing, Siem managed to consolidate power, but had little support amongst the people. However, when it became clear that he could no longer control all the aggrieved parties, the United States backed a coup that led to his ouster and assassination by other anti-communist generals. Ho Chi Minh and the North Vietnamese Politburo had this to say about Tiem's assassination. The consequences of the 1st of November coup d'etat will be contrary to the calculations of the US imperialists. Tiem was one of the strongest individuals resisting the people and communism. Everything that could be done in an attempt to crush the revolution was carried out by Tiem. Tiem was one of the most competent lackeys of the US imperialists. Among the anti-communists in South Vietnam or exiled in other countries, no one has sufficient political assets and ability to cause others to obey. Therefore, the lackey administration cannot be stabilized. The coup d'etat on November 1, 1963 will not be the last. 
Ho Chi Minh was right. South Vietnam had a series of coups before it was toppled by the North Vietnamese forces, and the country was reunited. Number 1. Franz Ferdinand This one's obviously a little more well-known, but no list of world-altering assassinations is complete without it. The origin of the First World War can be traced back to many issues, but few would argue that the assassination of Franz Ferdinand did not serve as the catalyst to send the great powers of the world to the battlefield. Ferdinand had many titles, but was most notably the Archduke of Austria Este. The Archduke was assassinated by members of the Black Hand, a secret military society which formed with the aim of uniting all territories with Slavic majority, including those annexed by the Habsburg Empire. Members of the Black Hand believed that the assassination may lead to the declaration of war against Serbia, but that Russia would come to their defense. They did not foresee the outbreak of a world war that saw over 37 million people dead. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to this channel for brand new videos every day of the week. Also, I've got another channel. It's called Today I Found Out. And on that channel, we have content very much like this, except we dive into one specific subject in real depth. You can check that out through the icon on the screen now. But if you're looking for something else to watch right now, why not check out another Top 10s video or a Today I Found Out video over there on the right. And as always, thank you for watching.